Hey guys, it's Maris. Welcome back to Harpies in the Trees, where I review horror books with a super natural focus. I hope you guys are doing well and you are in the mood for a unboxing today. I just finished filming the unboxing for Regina's um, haunted library giveaway that I won. So if you haven't seen that, I'll put that up here for you. Um, but now I'm going to go ahead and do this creepy crate unboxing. It's going to be interesting to say the least because the last box was not, you know, was very disappointing, honestly. And I hope that everything in this box is just a little bit more uh, catering to horror fans a little bit more and, and less less so towards the promotional kind of aspect so we'll see so before we get into the unboxing for the creepy crate I have a question for you would you guys be interested in doing a readathon um, and I think the book would be the Graham Masterton book the house of a hundred whispers if that is something that interests you and you would you would really like to participate in that let me know in the comments below and I will you know, see if there's, you know, enough people who are wanting to do it and we will do it. Theodora says, 100% I believe you can judge or rate or whatever books that you have DNF'd. Just because you didn't get to the end, you still read a certain amount, it made you feel a certain way, and for whatever reason, the book's content made you put it down. Those feelings and experiences are just as valid and important as any other reading experience. Absolutely. Completely agree. I, I think like because we are all different types of people and we all have different types of tolerances, different types of likes and dislikes, and I think it makes sense that we should read in the ways that make sense to ourselves, you know? Like, we don't have to force ourselves to like a genre just because we're supposed to, or an author, for instance, or a book. German Landard says, I think DNFing is really important. Books take up a lot of time, and in my opinion, you shouldn't waste 10 to 12 hours reading something that you're not enjoying. Also, I agree that you can't review a book unless you've finished reading it. I will say that the, the books that I did DNF, I don't think I, I reviewed, but I haven't really DNF that many. I think it's okay if you rate something that you didn't finish, that you did DNF because you weren't enjoying it. I think that's still kind of valid, you know, because you can say like, here's a percentage of people who didn't finish it because they didn't like it. I mean, I think that's fair to say. I usually read the bad reviews first. And then I kind of look through the, be the better reviews. Kaylee Reed says, I just picked up the first five books in the Necroscope series. The books are kind of like Tom Clancy, but with vampires. <laughs> Tom Clancy, but with vampires. <laughs> I don't know anything about Tom Clancy. I just know that he has like a shit ton of like video games, like just war games type stuff. <laughs> so it's kind of funny. <laughs> the time is now, let's open up this box I just cannot I'm just so curious I'm just so insanely curious I hope this is gonna be good I hope I hope I hope let's see mm -hmm. okay so that's what it looks like on the inside it looks like they're not really using a lot of packaging I think this is the spoiler card but I can't really tell because in the back it has a list of like the items but it's like day one day two day three okay and then I see we have a stack of cards here it has a man with an axe let's take a look at these cards so here are the cards they are very very flimsy um, so they don't really feel like cards at all don't know <laughs> what this is. It just kind of looks like this really bad design. Okay, so they're just called slasher playing cards. So I guess these are just like, I don't know, maybe teenagers, but I hate it. <laughs> oh, a beach ball, oh my God. 
This is actually pretty awesome. But this is kind of cool, just like an old school beach ball and it has, looks like Chucky on it, maybe. <laughs> I like this, this is definitely awesome. It's just like putting me in the mood for going to the beach or something. This is cool. Okay, so I like one thing, keep going. All right, so we have like one of these little, oh. So this is from the film Sleepaway Camp. Like from the 80s. This is pretty cool. I like that. Okay, and then we have a pin. I think it's I think it's jigsaw, I guess. This is cool. I like this. Oh, and we have a little beaker of a puzzle. <laughs> it's kind of cool actually. It's like this lady covered in blood this is awesome i love this assemble the woman of your dreams one piece at a time <laughs> this is actually pretty cool i like this it's pretty tiny too the um like the little pieces so small but really good for going on a camping trip a nice big hardcover book. The Case of the Murderous Dr. Cream. The Hunt for a Victorian Era Serial Killer. This is pretty cool. As you know, I love the Victorian serial killers. They are pretty, um, I, I don't want to say they're alluring, just like interesting. <laughs> and we have a picture of the author. In the span of 15 years, Dr. Thomas Neal Cream murdered as many as 10 people in the United States, Britain, and Canada, making him one of the most prolific killers of his time. Poison was his weapon of choice. Structured around his London murder trial in 1892, when he was finally brought to justice, the case of the murderous Dr. Cream exposes the blind trust given to medical practitioners, as well as the flawed detection methods, bungled investigations, corrupt officials, and stifling morality of Victorian society that allowed Dr. Cream to prey on vulnerable and desperate women, many of whom had turned to him for medical help. Dean Job transports readers to the late 19th century as Scotland Yard tracks Dr. Cream's movements through Canada and Chicago, and finally to London, where new investigative tools called forensics were just coming into use, and most investigators could hardly imagine that serial killers existed. Dr. Cream's crimes marked the emergence of a new breed of killer, one who operated without motive or remorse, who murdered simply for the sake of murder. I feel like the ones that do kill though without motive or remorse are just really not as interesting as like other um, serial killers who have kind of like this whole entire psychological makeup that has to be, you know, uh, unwound thread by thread uh, by detectives and other people. Uh, I find those to be more satisfying and I guess because it's, you know, it, you have some sort of, uh, you have some sort of roadway, right? Some kind of map where you're like, oh yeah, you know, this person is like this, so when they made this connection, they did this action. And it feels good because it makes sense. And even though all things in life don't make sense, um, sometimes I feel like just the, the, the killers that are just, you know, they just kill to kill are just not as interesting to me. There are quite a few illustrations, like throughout, they look like mainly taken probably from the newspapers at that time. So there's illustrations of victims, of people, of locations. So that sounds cool. I don't think that I'll be reading it anytime too soon though, because I just, if you've been watching my book hauls and stuff like that, I I have a stack of stuff that I'm just, just cannot wait to get into. And even though this sounds really cool, I think this is a little bit more demure compared to what I want to be reading at the moment. So, I really do like that there was a book this time though, and it is a book that is in my wheelhouse, which is nice. So I read through all of the days on this paper, which is uh, one through four, and the items that we got are mentioned in these entries, and they're kind of just talking about arriving at camp and getting lost and things going wrong or whatever. <laughs> so for day one, um, 
It says, got this nice bag though, name of the camp right on it, plus a bunch of other stuff that I guess they're going to be giving out to the campers when they arrive. Some books, some cards, a puzzle, that kind of thing. That beach ball is kind of creepy though. <laughs> And on day two, we were playing a game of strip poker and the cards they gave us in these bags, they're weird cards too, with like high school kids on them. Day three, maybe I was too hard on Dean. He took us out for a hike today. He said that he wanted to see what the trail looked like. Day four, Tim was putting this puzzle together on the floor. And I guess it was the puzzle we got in our kit, but I swear it looked like it was of a naked lady or something. The back door was hanging open, rain coming in, lightning cracking outside, but no signs of Liz. Then Tim pointed out the pin. It was an enamel pin, the kind they have been so popular lately. It was like a clown or a puppet or something, but it was creepy as hell. Just staring at you with these weird red and black eyes. So yeah, I kind of like that they did that. I think that's really cool. It's a bit immersive and kind of, I think it adds a little bit of a layer to what we got because it comes with this story. So that's pretty cool. So overall, it's definitely a better box than last time. The only thing I didn't really like were the playing cards. Uh, I didn't like the artwork and they don't really feel like playing cards. Um, but everything else is um, pretty fun. I love the beach ball. <laughs> I want to blow it up and just like hit it around in the living room. It was at this moment that he knew he fucked up. I don't really use these bags, but they're always kind of useful to have. And you know, the artwork I think is nice. Pin is cool. I will add this to my pin collection. I think it's pretty awesome. And uh, I really like this. I think this is... Maybe this is my favorite thing. I think it's just kind of funny. I like the artwork. I like how it's presented in the little beaker type capsule thing. So I definitely would say this box is better than last time. I like the immersive uh, spoiler card. I think that was very clever and interesting and just like something fun to add to the box. I like all of the items except for the playing cards. So, you know, that that's a, that's a good box. That's a good box. And the way I judge something about it being cool is it's like, is it like a joyful item where like, it's just something that brings me joy and it just seems fun or is it useful? So I definitely like, you know, useful kind of things um, and just, you know, things that are meant to bring joy, which is, you know, what we kind of want out of every box. So you guys should let me know what you guys think about this box, um, what you think about the items here, what you think about the book. If you want to try out this box for $5 off, you can use my code HARPY. If you want to check out other unboxings for this specific company, Creepy Crate, I have a whole entire playlist. So I'll put it up here for you and you can check those out. Thank you so much to Creepy Crate for sending me this box for my honest opinion. I really do appreciate it. If you like this video, please like and comment below. Other than that, please take care of yourselves, watch out for each other, and I will talk to you next time.